السلام علیکم خواتین حضرات وسیم ایسن ویلکم سی یو ٹو لیکچر نمبر تھرٹی ایٹ آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور ایٹ دا ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان وی آر ان ٹو پرائسنگ آئی اسٹارٹ ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ اسٹریٹجک پرائسنگ ان آڈر ٹو لیوریج فار یور برانڈ ان دا پریویس لیکچر اینڈ آئی ٹاک اباؤٹ ہاؤ دا برانڈس کین چارج یور پریمیم but there are certain conditions which ought to be fulfilled before a brand is in a position to start charging premium. And those conditions basically stem from the strength of the brand. In other words, if the brand is strong, you are in a position to charge premium. If the brand is not strong, you are not in a position to charge premium. It is a very simple relationship. But then the question which really arises is what is the right model for the one company to undertake its pricing strategy. And since the whole discussion is all about the strategic considerations when it comes to the brand management, we have to look into all those things and there are certain drivers which we considered are very important and that allow us to go for a good level of pricing and especially premium. Back to what should be the right model for the one company to go for pricing its brands. The model which generally is in practice all over the world by most of the businesses is cost-based. And I did point out the one fact that there are companies that really are not very careful about working out their pricing while they work with this model only because they work with uh, something which is bare minimum. And the reason they work with uh, the bare minimum requirements is uh, that they would just like to make sure that um, as long as uh, they can um, generate the right returns, uh, you know, net profit to sales ratio and net profit to investment ratio and so on and so forth, and uh, they end up uh, having uh, the positive cash flow, everything is fine and we don't really have to do anything with pricing. Let us be conservative and let us not go for something which may be uh, perceived by the customer as uh, something very um, aggressive and uh, something uh, unacceptable. Companies resort to uh, those um, uh, standards which are very conventional and traditional. What really happens uh, under this model is that uh, you work out your costs at a certain margin and then uh, through all the successive stages of uh, the channel system, margins are added uh, to the costs uh, to different uh, members of the channel and, uh, the, and the final price is worked out by the time the product gets into the hand of the final consumer. So in other words, it is like uh, you have worked out uh, cost as X. X plus 1 is uh, your pricing and uh, you sell at that price to your distributor. He adds his margin, uh, which is going to be you know, your price, which is his cost plus 1 and um, so on and so forth down the line and at every successive stage a margin is added and uh, price relating to that particular phase is worked out and uh, get sold to the next party and that becomes next party's cost. So this is the way the traditional model works. I shall be talking about uh, the different strategies under the cost based model uh, just to see to it how we can make uh, uh, the right most decisions could by taking into consideration the right strategic um, elements uh, gada, so that we do not end up making any mistakes uh, gada, in uh, the working order of our prices. Uh, but I will start with uh, the other model for the time being, which we call the market based model. Market based gada, model refers to gada, the pricing gada, which is gada, worked out in the market. Now, gada, what this essentially gada, means is that. You look at your customer, your uh, the brand's positioning, and your competition, and then decide uh, what should be your pricing. 
But what is important under this model is that you've got to have got a very good knowledge of your customer and your competition. Well, you can go through the different kinds of research models in order to identify your customer's profile and the buying behavior and the buying criteria. Why they buy and how they buy and what they buy and what are their preferences and so on and so forth. But when it comes to competition, it offers certain complications and certain challenges which are to be surmounted before you really can build that element into your pricing model. Understanding your competition really calls for a lot of market intelligence which you may not be able to generate to the level that you are satisfied with in terms of taking into consideration various factors for your pricing. So therefore, we can say that unless our understanding of the customer and the competition is complete, we can, but we may not be able to go for the right market-based price. In general, you can put it like this, that if your competition is selling something for 150 and you start considering a market price of something like 140 or 45, uh, meaning in the neighborhood of uh, your competitor's pricing, and then you could work it backwards um, all the way through the margins uh, and back to the cost, and uh, then work out uh, what is the net margin. That basically is what market-based pricing refers to. So in other words, uh, the market-based pricing has an inverse relationship with, uh, with the cost-based pricing. Whereas uh, the cost-based pricing uh, starts within the company and you start working with the costs first and then uh, to add up your margins and then be satisfied and content with a certain level of pricing. Market-based pricing starts in the market uh, the by taking into account what competition is doing and by taking into account what uh, uh, the customer is um, willing to pay or maybe willing to pay and then you work backwards right down to the company level and then decide the pricing. Under the, the market-based model, uh, you take into account your customer's needs and uh, the sensitivities and uh, the competing products. On the basis of all these, you uh, create a superior value through your uh, product and uh, offer that to your customer at a price acceptable to him or her. Customer sensitivity is uh, one of the fundamentals in uh, this the pricing model because it is not that we follow competition only you know, for the sake of following it. Um, it, it is done kind of on the basis of a certain method and it has to be that way. If uh, the customers kind of are sensitive uh, to paying uh, beyond a certain point, kind of you must not go kind of beyond that. And that is where the, the market information and market intelligence kind of comes into play and the significance of that can hardly be emphasized at this juncture. Let us now discuss um, few strategies which form uh, the market-based uh, model uh, one by one for your renewed understanding. Uh, the reason I say the renewed understanding because uh, you might have learned these strategies in uh, one of your basic courses. Uh, but how these strategies fit into the model here in a very strategic context, let us talk about that. Uh, first of all, look, we have this strategy of uh, what marketing people call skim pricing. It works under the circumstances of high differentiation. With the meaning the product has got to be very highly differentiated and it must offer the company a very strong competitive advantage, uh, preferably sustainable advantage. You keep on charging that premium until the time competition really catches up. But when competition catches up, then uh, the pricing model changes and um, you might have to do something with your pricing in terms of 
certain adjustments. The second the model which is in vogue in relation to the market-based strategy is value in use pricing. Now, this model basically relates to the consumer durables, basically. And uh, by value in use, uh, what really means is the, the value of the product right from the time that you buy it okay, the, to the time of the completion of the life cycle of the product. So in other words, that this, this strategy really relates to the, the product life cycle. And uh, the fact is that all the strategies that I'm talking about uh, relate to uh, the various stages of uh, products life cycles and therefore that have got to be taken into that particular light. So this value in use to the pricing strategy uh, relates to consumer durables and uh, what you do is that you take into account the value of the product from the time that it is bought to the time the product completes its life cycle. Now what this essentially means is that there are certain costs which uh, you have to incur meaning which customers could have to incur uh, in terms of uh, using the product throughout its life cycle. And that cost is incurred in uh, relation to the maintenance. Uh, you have to pay to uh, people who come to service those products, uh, for example, air conditioners, or you have to pay for the spare parts which you have to buy from time to time in order to maintain those products. Cars, for example, or motorbikes. So there could be uh, a long list of uh, these kinds of products. Uh, the objective here is to understand that uh, the cost which customers incur uh, during uh, the various uh, phases of uh, the use of the product uh, until the time either the product is discarded or resold, there is a certain cost. And that cost uh, keeps on accumulating. So if customer thinks that the economic benefit which the customer is going to enjoy more in case of one particular product as far as the value in use is concerned in comparison with competition, then the customer would go for your brand. So in other words, you as the marketing people must be aware of the value in use concept which basically relates to not only the initial the price of the product at which you sell the product, but also the costs which keep on incurring during the life cycle of that product. And um, if you think uh, that uh, the, the value in use of your brand uh, offers superior economic benefit to customers in relation to uh, your competing products, then your pricing is right. You can uh, take examples of uh, those cars which uh, have you know, very good resale value, for example, and uh, the cost of maintenance which you require in order to maintain uh, a certain model. There are uh, the models which are very attractive and uh, which are durable, which also have uh, the design appeal, but then the value in use uh, may not be that high only because of high maintenance costs. So with the help of uh, these examples, I believe that uh, the concept of uh, uh, value in use, VIU pricing is uh, clear to all of us. Another uh, pricing strategy is uh, segment pricing. This um, basically relates to the market segments and uh, that is something which uh, I've been talking about very frequently. Different customers within the segment even can have different needs and uh, I will tell you with the help of an example why. So therefore you've got to have uh, the different types of uh, the pricing packages for uh, those customers within uh, one particular segment or for that matter what you can do is you can divide the segment into sub segments uh, in relation to pricing. And uh, you can classify as segment A, segment B, segment C, uh, and uh, can offer those customers uh, different pricing packages. 
Uh, let us take the example of uh, a cell phone company which sells connections. Uh, why is it that uh, the cell the phone connection companies uh, that sell connectivity offer the various packages in terms of um, incoming calls, in terms of uh, the outgoing calls, for the meaning uh, there are customers who really emphasize um, on um, the making calls and there are customers who really um, have uh, their basic uh, concern about incoming calls and then uh, there are customers who like to use uh, their telephones or their connections uh, during the night time. So knowing your customer and knowing your customer's needs and knowing what competition is doing and knowing the sensitivities of those customers, you come up with the different packages uh, within the same segment and uh, that is what you call uh, segment pricing. What is important um, in segment pricing uh, also is the fact that uh, the economic value which you offer your customer it must not be compromised. If uh, the economic value or the economic benefits which uh, the customer is uh, deriving you know, out of the service that you offer uh, are uh, outweighed by a competing offer, then there has to be something wrong with your pricing. And you must start uh, reconsidering your pricing uh, strategy or uh, the method for that matter all over again. Now this doesn't really mean that you have to bring about a strategic change. Your customers never get bored of the strategies which you have. And by the same token, the you people as managers within the companies should not be bored by the strategies. It is the execution or it is the uh, technical side which uh, offers the boredom to your customers uh, at times. And whenever you think that uh, that stage is the setting in, you should be sensitive to that and uh, get into uh, a reconsideration of your uh, tactical moves. Another um, method is uh, what marketing people call strategic account pricing. Now, this pricing method basically concerns large accounts, meaning large customers. You are into industrial selling, you know, for example, and you have various kinds of customers and various levels of customers, and you can segment the market by the good old principle of 80-20. Let us talk about that. That 80% of your volume is constituted by 20% of your customers. What you can do is you can bring about certain classifications within that 80% of uh, the volume, the meaning 20% of your customers, and uh, go for those customers which are the prime, prime customers. And uh, you develop a relationship on long-term basis with those customers by offering a price which is a better price than the one you offer others. Now, you may start questioning that this is not the premium price because you are charging others a higher price, whereas you are charging you know, these topmost parties something which is lower in price and um, you are offering that for the sake of relationship. Well, you do that because you are out to develop a long-term uh, relationship and uh, what happens is um, in down times when um, things that may not be as uh, the rosy for the industry, you may uh, talk those customers into uh, either to keep on giving the same price or to maybe, uh, maybe uh, convince them into uh, offering you a little better price because you have been uh, good to them all along your uh, relationship period. This again is uh, very strategic in nature. But what you're trying to achieve is a long-term strategic relationship with your prime buyers. And again, I would say that uh, the concept of uh, the economic value uh, must be taken into consideration. You have to offer a 
uh, got a value to your customers got which cannot be surpassed got by your competition. And uh, that is how got you maintain a good relationship with got your customers. Now, got it is not only a better got pricing uh, level uh, got which uh, got keeps your customers got very loyal to got your company or toward your brand, it has to be so many other considerations. Uh, got because uh, got had it been only for the price, then the drivers uh, toward loyalty uh, would not have worked the way that they do work. Um, and the way I explained those with the help of uh, a market research model. So relationship marketing that comes in and takes a very important seat here. Uh, if not the driver's seat, a very important seat, which really uh, allows you to look into the, the rightmost considerations. Why? and when to go for this kind of uh, pricing method. The other one uh, under the, the market-based the model is uh, the, what marketing people call plus one pricing. Plus one pricing uh, applies in uh, the mature market conditions. Under market conditions in which all products carry good benefits uh, for customers. What could be those conditions? Well, you can take the example of uh, the car market. You can take the example of uh, other consumer durables like um, electronic equipment, uh, the computers, uh, the musical equipment, and so on and so forth. There are so many different brands that are offering a good customer value, and uh, it only is a question of choice. Now, why you choose the one brand over another one is a separate kind of a discussion which uh, we've been holding you know, every now and then. But uh, the fact remains that uh, the plus one uh, pricing the works under conditions in which most of the products offer good customer value and uh, the good benefits. Uh, what happens uh, under these uh, the conditions is that uh, very strong brands, they become very sensitive about the positioning they have in the market. They know that uh, the positions uh, they have are fully occupied in the minds of uh, the customers, and therefore they are in a position to charge a premium under this pricing method. And uh, I would like to draw your attention back to uh, the car model which I talked about in uh, one of the lectures about positioning. Well, there's a car uh, which appeals to uh, the safety, and there's a car which appeals to uh, very high performance, and there's a car which appeals to comfort and luxury. When that is considered very sensitively by the, the marketing people, they start thinking in terms of plus one, meaning everybody's offering what is a plus? But we certainly have something which is plus one. So even if uh, the other models or other uh, the brands are charging premium pricing, our pricing has got to be, you know, the, the market premium plus one. And it is because of that reason they charge a price which is much higher than uh, the price which uh, comparable models or competitive offerings carry in the marketplace. And the fact is that uh, if you uh, draw a comparison in terms of uh, the specifications, there may not be very great differences. So the only difference which um, is there is in the, the minds of the uh, customers, and uh, that certainly has uh, a background. The company has succeeded in occupying that position. So if you have achieved that position, you are in a uh, position, so to say, to charge uh, what they call plus one pricing. In other words, it is just the one feature which is the extra in terms of the one product or one brand which really allows that brand to go for the price premium under this method. So these are a few of the strategies which the marketing people are going to have to themselves uh, the while the work for pricing under the market-based pricing model. 
let us now move on to the cost based model the meaning the strategies that we have to ourselves uh, while working under this model before i start talking about uh, what cost based uh, the model is uh, let us uh, look at uh, the few of the uh, fundamentals that uh, we have to uh, be aware of and we have to be uh, very sensitive to uh, before we work out our pricing on the basis of uh, cost based model uh, first of all look at we have to have uh, a very clear understanding of the cost drivers and uh, the value of the product now these are the two strategic elements which are of very high importance i repeat of very high importance when it comes to the cost based model because remember one thing under the cost based model uh, there is no the one fixed price and i gave you the example of a product which you sell for uh, 100 and uh, maybe shortly after launching of the product you may start realizing that you should have launched that at 110 so this is one example which says it all uh, why cost based model has to be given uh, extra uh, consideration while you work with uh, the different pricing strategies you must know what the cost drivers are and you must know what the value of the product is it is the value of the product of which most of the companies are not really aware of you'll be surprised to know that uh, many companies are not really aware of the fact as to how good their product is now this is not to say that uh, every time every company or any company coming up with uh, a certain product or a certain brand uh, that does come up with something uh, out of this world but what i'm saying is that in most of the cases what happens is that you create a quality product and then you hesitate to go for the rightmost price only because you um, are very sensitive to the uh, the market reaction and uh, you may not take into account all the opportunities which may present themselves to you in terms of charging the right price only because you do not fully realize the value of your own product the way it is realized by the customer so in other words the uh, realization on your part uh, has got to be uh, the very uh, compatible with or rather congruent with the perception of the customer you must assess the product the way customer assesses it uh, you might be wondering you know, how is that possible that, uh, that there's a gap between uh, the customer's perception and uh, the company's assessment of its own brand but that's the way it does happen in the market only because like i said companies like to be or prefer to be conservative my lesson to you here is not to be extra aggressive all I'm saying is that you do not really have to be extra conservative when it comes to pricing. So in other words, the uh, attention to uh, the product benefits and uh, the customer value uh, really uh, enables you to charge more and uh, earn more and uh, then be able to achieve all your objectives. And that is what pricing is all about. Market-based pricing may look like uh, the preferred approach to pricing, uh, but the fact remains that uh, it may not be very ideal uh, under many circumstances and uh, in many situations. And that really calls for the need to have uh, a cost-based uh, model. The, the cost-based uh, model has, uh, to its core, the, the manufacturing costs which we incur during the process of uh, the manufacturing, and uh, we add to that our margin and then come up with a pricing at which we sell to our distributors or dealers for that matter and uh, what happens uh, thereon is that uh, at every successive stage of the channel the mechanism of added margins takes place and the process goes on until the, the product uh, finally reaches into the hands of the final customer so this is uh, the, what cost-based uh, the model is. Uh, but I will repeat that uh, we've got to be very careful with uh, the elements of um, uh, the customer value. 
Okay, they're not only the, the cost drivers, but, the, but also the customer value that we have to keep into account could while working out our pricing strategy on the basis of a cost-based model. The cost-based pricing model is uh, the generally applied in those markets uh, where uh, the differentiation is uh, minimal. Uh, the meaning you see it is not as high as uh, it is in those markets which uh, are uh, premium price markets and uh, where consumer durables really get a call for um, a great differentiation or even consumer consumables call for uh, with a very high level of differentiation. Uh, it is because of uh, the low level of differentiation that uh, we become very sensitive about uh, any price increase or uh, about any increment of price that uh, we may start considering uh, in terms of finalizing the price. The first strategy that we can uh, talk about is the floor pricing. Now, floor pricing, as the name suggests, is the lowest possible price a company can charge. Uh, what happens uh, under uh, this uh, the pricing method is that uh, the companies come up with uh, the bare minimum price, meaning by adding a bare uh, the minimum level of margin to the costs and come up with uh, the A pricing which gives the company um, some pre-considered and pre-conceived uh, returns uh, like uh, the 20% return on investment. This is the one example or uh, the 15% on sales and companies you know, think to themselves as long as we are in a position to achieve all this we are doing okay and uh, the price is right. Such a price and such a policy is not a reflection of uh, the reality in the market. This is just a the benchmark with which we use in order to generate certain results. And uh, this is the pricing strategy with which uh, may uh, deprive the company of certain uh, attractive opportunities of uh, the better pricing. And therefore, uh, floor pricing is a pricing method which should be avoided. The next one is uh, cost plus pricing. Cost plus pricing basically is uh, what the uh, cost-based uh, method is all about. Okay, the meaning you add uh, certain margin to the cost and the pass it on to the next stage, on to the next stage and on to the next stage and the process goes on until it reaches the final uh, the consumer. Uh, what is important here is that uh, we you know, should not go for uh, uh, cost plus the pricing uh, by compromising number one, uh, the company the profitability and uh, also uh, the customer value. Because uh, when we get into this uh, the pricing method, uh, the chances are that we are compromising uh, the quality you know, here and there. And uh, if the company is convinced that quality is not compromised, meaning the customer value is offered to the fullest in relation to the pricing level and uh, the, the profitability is also uh, decent, then uh, cost plus pricing uh, may be the right strategy under circumstances that dictate that strategy. So I'm not saying that, uh, that this should be um, adopted uh, every time could we start looking into the pricing method. Reduced costs uh, could mean uh, could higher margins and uh, could under uh, this kind of uh, the pricing strategy, could what uh, could the companies generally do is they like to go for could high volumes and lower costs. And it is because of uh, the objective of achieving lower costs that uh, could at times could we start compromising the performance of the brand. If the performance is not compromised, everything is fine. And uh, if high volumes are achieved and also performance is delivered, then it is not a bad strategy. But if the high volumes are achieved at the cost of performance and also at the cost of uh, profitability, then this may call for a reconsideration. Yet another method of uh, the pricing that uh, we consider under the model of uh, the cost-based pricing is the penetration price. Uh, the, or penetration pricing 
Uh, this uh, the method is uh, the employed the mostly under those conditions the, when you have a lot of growth taking place in the market. Uh, what happens is the, you want to be a part of that growth and uh, in order to grow fast, uh, the, you lower your prices in a bid to post the very high volumes. And the high volumes the, give you the high in the share of the market and uh, the, going by the scale economies, the, what happens is you lower your costs. And when you lower your costs, uh, that really offset the impact of uh, the lower pricing to some extent. But then you've got to be very sensitive about uh, not getting into the zone, which is kind of a gray zone, and uh, which is just about at the border of being profitable and not being profitable. So if you want to go for the penetration, uh, go for a pricing level, which is not uh, dangerous. This uh, uh, pricing method is uh, employed in, in markets where uh, the level of uh, differentiation is the minimal and uh, in which you know, customers are uh, very highly price sensitive because if the customers are not sensitive there's no reason for you to go for uh, a low price uh, for the sake of high volumes. There are other methods to increase your volumes even at a price which otherwise could be higher than in the prescribed by this particular strategy. So another um, the character of uh, this particular market in which this strategy works is uh, a lot of manufacturers and uh, the easy entry. Um, it is not very difficult for uh, the people to enter uh, the market, uh, which essentially means that um, this market doesn't really deal with uh, the high-tech things. It deals with uh, the level of technology, which really allows uh, so many different entrants or potential entrants to enter the market. Under this uh, the pricing strategy, the powerful companies, uh, of that matter, uh, the dominant players, uh, always have an advantage because uh, they uh, have a leadership role and um, they have a uh, very high share of the market. They are selling high volumes. They can um, further uh, lower the price and cause a shakeout you know, because uh, if the industry is uh, not uh, really a you know, high technology industry and uh, it attracts you know, so many different players, the chances are not all the players are financially you know, very strong and therefore uh, the powerful one uh, or the, the major ones can really uh, bring about a crowding out uh, in this kind of a market. And uh, when that happens, it really uh, rationalizes uh, so many uh, the marketing practices uh, within uh, this kind of a segment. The other one, um, as part of uh, the cost-based uh, the pricing uh, strategy or pricing model is what you may call harvest pricing. Now, this uh, kind of uh, the pricing method is uh, undertaken when uh, you're dealing with a brand which is almost dying and uh, which is uh, making uh, the way for uh, another brand or uh, some improvement, the meaning an innovative product. Uh, what happens is uh, you have a brand which is going down, it is declining, and uh, you still have to have it uh, in the market because uh, you cannot have disgruntled customers. Uh, whatever customers you are left with, and uh, you are going through all the complications of the supply chain, you are manufacturing it in the first place, and then making sure that the brand gets into the warehouses, into the hands of the distributors, onto the retailers, and then onto a select few customers. So, in order to hasten the decline of the brand and uh, create the stage for its successor, you increase the price. And uh, you increase the price uh, by a fairly in a big margin in order to discourage uh, the customers from buying it. Uh, what happens is the volume goes further down, but the contribution improves. It is uh, automatic. When um, the, the price goes up, the contribution margin has to increase. And that increased margin really justifies the existence of that particular brand 
uh, at whatever level it exists. And then it only is a question of time to when that is overtaken or that is replaced by an improved version. And naturally, you would like to go for an improved version when you are fully prepared with uh, all the preliminaries. So that is uh, all about um, the, the different strategies which you can uh, bring into play in relation to the cost-based uh, the pricing method. We have um, learned market-based pricing and uh, the cost-based pricing. Uh, we should be in a position to relate uh, the different strategies to our situations, whatever those are and wherever we are. Uh, what I'm saying is that uh, the eight or nine different uh, the strategies that fall under the two respective uh, methods uh, they should be able to uh, the drive us toward uh, the solution to the pricing problem. Uh, the, but uh, the, at the same time, I would say that uh, there, is, there is no the one particular answer uh, the, to uh, the situation that we might find ourselves in. So uh, the, it may be a combination of uh, the different strategies that you may have to employ in order to come up with uh, the right most pricing. But uh, the fact remains that uh, the market-based pricing starts from the market where you give a very high consideration to the competition, your customer, your customer's sensitivities, and uh, your brand's positioning, and work all the way back to the uh, margins and to the uh, manufacturing process. The whereas uh, the under the cost-based the method, the uh, costing starts uh, at the end of the manufacturing process. Uh, you take into consideration all the, the cost drivers and uh, then go through a successive process of adding margins and keep doing that until you reach the final consumer. It is wonderful to have uh, the premium pricing because uh, that offers you uh, the better profitability and uh, the high margins but then the volumes may not be very high and uh, you might start pondering uh, what to do because uh, you may like to go for uh, very high volumes. Conversely, if you go for uh, the cost-based uh, pricing, the, the volumes may be very high but the profitability may not be in that zone where you really want it to be. All you have is uh, the very good benchmarks which uh, allow you to to go for the financial returns which are the bare minimum for the company to achieve its objectives. Uh, therefore, uh, there is no the one set answer to the different situations in which you could find yourself uh, the while you're working in a practical field uh, the for your uh, the different brands and uh, it has to be uh, the based on meaning. The decision for pricing has to be based on uh, a few fundamentals and uh, those uh, the fundamental considerations are uh, summarized in the following form. And of course, these uh, fundamental considerations are based on the uh, understanding that we already have developed. I'm just going to summarize for you so that you are in a position to make uh, the right most decision for pricing. Why? Because the most important objective is that you do not undervalue your brand, you do not undersell it, and you do not really deny yourself the opportunity of charging the right price. Even if it is not the premium price, you must not deny yourself the opportunity of the right price. So with that objective, let us now take a look at um, the, the fundamental considerations with which uh, I'm going to summarize for you in the light of the discussion that we've had so far. First of all, uh, differentiation is the guide. Level of differentiation defines uh, for the company the kind of pricing it should go for. And uh, here I would like to say all over again that uh, it is the strategies of uh, segmentation along with differentiation which really define your pricing patterns. If you go back to uh, the illustration uh, that I gave you for uh, the fast food um, the product, uh, the meaning sandwiches, you will immediately realize what I'm talking about. So with the help of that graphic illustration, you can look into the various uh, the pricing points 
in relation to differentiation. If a market is uh, the very, uh, if a market calls for the very high level of differentiation, then of course you have to come up with uh, something very innovative and uh, uh, you're going to charge the price accordingly and the chances are that you will go for a premium price. If you are um, operating in a segment which uh, really is uh, not very sensitive to uh, the uh, elements of uh, differentiation, then you will go for a price which is cost-based and uh, you certainly would like to go for very high volumes and uh, still would like to make sure that there's, there's a balance between uh, those uh, the volumes and uh, your profitability. You really have to, uh, as a point of summary, apart from differentiation, you really have to touch base with both the models and then see which situation really is the most appropriate for you in terms of your pricing model. Like I said earlier, you have something like eight or nine different strategic ways of going about the pricing. One of the ways has got to fit into your requirements and you make your decision accordingly. Another point of the summary is the contribution margin. Contribution margin keeps the popping up again and again because this is something extremely important. Let me also tell you, while I summarize things for you, that it is not going to be the basic job of a brand manager to ensure the contribution margin of a product. Uh, brand managers and marketing managers certainly are going to be very important in terms of suggesting the right uh, level of pricing. Uh, but then the decision is going to be taken collectively by the marketing people and uh, by the, uh, the people in finance. And then you also have to have uh, the okay from the top management uh, for the final pricing. But it is extremely important for you to understand the strategic implications of the level of contribution which a brand offers to the company. So therefore, you've got to be very sensitive to the different price points uh, where they offer different levels of contribution and uh, the level has got to be very compatible with your strategic goals. So in other words, a combination of volume and uh, contribution margin has got to be achieved in a way that it really fulfills all the strategic objectives. That is the lesson. Another uh, the point of summary is that uh, high volume and low price um, must not affect contribution margin negatively. Well, this is an extension of the point which I have just discussed, meaning that you should not be carried away by the concept of high vo volumes to the point that it starts affecting your contribution margin negatively. Because if you have negative contribution, you are into an outright loss situation. And uh, what is the beauty of business if you are into a loss situation only because you are getting into that because you want to trade very high volumes with profitability. So never do that. However, if there is a very pressing argument uh, given by the salespeople that you have to have very high sales volume because you would like to have a very high share of the market and uh, thereby uh, will have a, a leadership role which is going to fulfill certain strategic maneuverings um, which will lead to you know, fulfillment of goals that you might consider it to a certain extent but not definitely uh, at the cost of profitability. Another point of summary is that uh, you have to assess the perceived value on part of the customer. So whatever model you are going to employ, you've got to uh, fully realize what really uh, is the level of um, the value uh, which you are offering. So uh, do not uh, create a gap uh, between the way uh, the customer perceives uh, your uh, the product and uh, the way uh, you assess the value of that product. The meaning the customer value which you are offering uh, has got to be very equal uh, to the way that your customer is perceiving it because otherwise you're going to miss the opportunity of charging the rightmost price. May that be uh, the 
market-based model or may that be the cost-based model. In both the cases, instead of charging 150, why should you charge 145? Or in case of cost-based model, um, instead of charging 110, why should you charge the 100? So you've got to be very sensitive to the uh, pricing level in relation to uh, the, the market sensitivities and uh, the profitability of the company. Having said all that, the last point of summary that I would tell you is that you've got to stay within the mainstream pricing. And that is something which is very easy to comprehend. And that is you've got to stay within the two limits, meaning the lowest limit of pricing within that particular segment and the highest the limit of pricing in that particular segment. Wherever you fit in, make sure that you do not undersell. That is the greatest lesson of this topic on pricing. With this, our lecture on pricing comes to a conclusion and we have fulfilled one more strategic phase of the brand management process. Thank you very much for your uh, listening and patience, and I look forward to talking with you in the next lecture. Allah Hafiz.